Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. And I will introduce Darius, who self-identifies as a person who makes weird internet stuff under the moniker of Tiny Subversions. Uh, his best known work is The Random Shopper, which is a program that bought him random books, DVDs, and CDs from Amazon each month. Um, he also has a small army of Twitter and Tumblr bots uh, that he builds because they make him smile. And uh, in his spare time, he founded NanoGenmo, where participants spend a month writing algorithms to generate 50,000 word novels. Um, and also Bot Summit, a yearly gathering of people who make bots. So please welcome Darius. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, what I actually want to do here is just go through some of the things that I've made and um, talk about design considerations around them. Uh, mostly I've just been inspired by the conversation that I've had with everybody over the last uh, day and a half or so. Uh, and then the breakout afterwards, I just want to like talk more about design considerations for bots and autonomous agents with, uh, with, with you all. Um, so as, as was mentioned in the, uh, in the opening there, uh, uh, the, the most, probably my best known project is this thing called Random Shopper. Uh, uh, I was um, working, I was thinking about uh, what happens when you order something on Amazon uh, and it takes two years for fulfillment to happen uh, and then two years later it's like you got a present from some, you know, pers past version of yourself and, and you get something you don't really care about anymore. And I'd also been thinking about um, uh, recommendation algorithms and all of that kind of stuff and, uh, and I thought, well, oh, wouldn't it be great if I make an application? where you can uh, you know, put in some categories and there's a slider and one end of the slider is deterministic, it just buys you stuff on your wish list. And on the other end of the slider is completely random and in the middle it sort of traverses your recommendations. And so you know, uh, I built a prototype which just did the randomness and, uh, and then it turned out uh, I really liked that so I stopped the project and shipped it. Uh, uh, and so what I ended up with was Random Shopper, which um, basically pulls a word out of a hat, searches Amazon for it, uh, finds things that are within its budget that you give it. I give it a $50 gift card once a month. Uh, and then just at random points in my daily life, I get these packages. And I didn't know what were inside them. And it sent me a Chomsky book, kind of funny, uh, as the first thing. Uh, and then I got this, like, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, s uh, this like acoustic, electroacoustic, uh, uh, avant-garde uh, Swedish-Hungarian music uh, as well uh, in that first uh, package. But uh, but so that was that was like this. And this one's a this one is a bot, but it's really weird because it um, uh, it doesn't match up with most of the other bots that I've built, which live on social networks and that kind of thing. This is a bot whose operating system is sort of on a server that I write, but it also gets executed through the United States Postal Service. Um, uh, uh, here's one. Uh, it's, a, it's a Tumblr bot. Uh, it's called uh, Reverse OCR. It's also on Twitter, but it's more popular on Tumblr. Uh, one of the things that I learned by making these bots and sometimes deploying the same bot to different social network is that different social networks have different affordances. So things are going to get more popular I can, uh, on certain networks depending on what kinds of actions they're doing. Uh, Tumblr is generally a more visual place than, than Twitter. Uh, uh, and um, uh, what reverse OCR does, there's this awful, awful uh, OCR library based on Tesseract called uh, OCRAD. And I was just playing around with it. Uh, and it was, I mean, that's pretty good. I thought that was a tilde, but. Uh, yeah, it, like it, 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 it thinks that character is like an L with an underscore. It's awful. Uh, but uh, I like false positives, so I wrote uh, an algorithm that basically just draws squiggles until it elicits what it thinks is a word. Uh, so that's chimney. Uh, that's adoption. Uh, that's addendum. Uh, uh, some good ones. Some, some of them you can actually, I like to stare at these and sort of figure out what's happening uh, with some of these. Yeah, here we go. This one's, this one's plowing. Uh, you can sort of see the N. There's an N right there. Uh, that's kind of a, a G. O's are really hard for it, but that's just because the algorithm that I wrote. The algorithm that I wrote is uh, uh, is kind of uh, uh, funny like that. It basically I just put 
I just put a, uh, uh, a pen down in the middle of a canvas and scribble until it thinks that's a T, uh, it thinks that's a slash, which that, that's actually pretty good. Um, anyway, uh, so that's, that's, that's reverse OCR, and that one was a project that I uh, didn't think people would like because I live on Twitter, and when I put it on Twitter, nobody really liked it, but then I put it on Tumblr, and people went kind of bonkers over it. It's got thousands of followers. Um, and I'll take a quick detour right now to talk about this context stuff. Um, people love to ask me uh, artificial intelligence questions. Uh, uh, I have done artificial intelligence in the past. Like I used to work in video games. Uh, I, you know, I'm familiar with that kind of work. I'm not doing artificial intelligence work here when I build these bots. It's all smoke and mirrors, which actually, if you're familiar with how artificial intelligence in video games happens, it's, that's actually all smoke and mirrors too. Because you're optimizing for entertainment uh, rather than something like academically capital H hard. Um, so, so, so here's something, right? So this is a, a word, promoter, uh, and then a definition for that word, one that promotes especially an active supporter or advocate. Um, now I can write a computer program that grabs another word and displays its definition. Uh, residue, the remainder of something after removal of parts or a part. Uh, avatar, the incarnation of a Hindu deity, uh, et cetera, right? Creeps, plural form of creep. Uh, so yeah, so we can just go through this. Okay, all right. Interpretation, the actor process of interpreting. Um, all right, it's not terribly interesting. Uh, all I have to do is add a few words and a picture to this, uh, and this becomes a joke generator. Uh, girl, you must be an interpretation because you are the act or process of interpreting. Uh, girl, you must be an appliance because you are a device or instrument designed to perform a specific function, especially an electrical device such as a toaster for household use. See synonyms at tool. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, girl, you must be a cuddling because you are the present participle of cuddle. Um, uh, uh, so, so if you if you were to ask someone, you know, uh, uh, is writing a joke generator computationally difficult, they would probably say yes. But it doesn't have to be. Uh, this is computationally extraordinarily simple, and there's really just a sort of sleight of hand trick, a non-computational design-based trick uh, that you can put on this uh, very simple algorithm that turns it into a joke generator. Uh, and I have, I have a, like, a, a, like a toy version of this that I put out on the internet, and like every, every month, like some blog picks it up, and then like thousands of people like waste many, many hours, uh, you can probably, uh, yeah, you should, you should get yeah, productivity loss, exactly. Uh, many, many hours with this thing uh, as, a, as a toy, and they tweet it and all that, uh, and I just love wasting people's time. Um, uh, so this is something, uh, one of the, the patterns that I often do is I'll look at um, human stupidity or human, uh, like basically repetitive human behavior in the wild. Sometimes it's stupidity and sometimes it's just interesting stuff. This is an example of interesting stuff. Uh, I was looking at the labor of, uh, of fans on Tumblr uh, and I noticed that people love to take snapshots, like little, make animated GIFs of their favorite TV shows and caption them and put them up on Tumblr. And I thought, well, that's pretty rote. I could automate that labor. Um, so what this does is it goes through uh, The Wire, uh, the television show The Wire, and um, uh, DVDs have subtitle files on them, uh, which contain the entire text of the script along with queuing information. So all you have to do is grab a line of script from the queuing information, and then you know what time to snip out the video of, and you can make a GIF, and you can put it on Tumblr. Um, so. Uh, so this just every hour, it's been going for, it's done thousands of these. Every hour it makes a GIF. Sometimes it, sometimes it captures these fantastic loops that I, I, that I don't think uh, a, a human might have grabbed on their own. Um, uh, and my favorite thing is when I see people using these in the wild as reaction GIFs. Uh, there's, one, there's one where one of the lieutenants just goes, stands up and goes, this is bullshit. Uh, and, and I see people use that in the wild uh, quite a bit. Um, and that was just algorithmically created. Uh, and again, this is also on Twitter, but it's more popular on Tumblr because Tumblr is sort of like the locus of this kind of fan labor. Um, also, an accident of this was, uh, was that uh, uh, I picked The Wire because I like that show because I needed to, to be able to evaluate the, 
uh, util like the, the the fact that my thing was working and creating something interesting. I couldn't do it with a show that I didn't like. Uh, this just happens to be that the wire sort of became crested in popularity well before Tumblr crested in popularity. So there weren't a whole lot of Tumblr GIF blogs that were doing stuff for the wire. So there's a lot of wire fans who are actually very grateful for the labor that this bot that this bot performs. Um, uh, this is again another example. This is more of a stupidity uh, 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 simulator. Uh, uh, this is based on, this is called auto charts. It does a couple different types of charts. Um, I just noticed people sharing these terrible flow charts. Uh, like they'll take song lyrics and turn them into flow chart form. And it's a really terrible joke. Uh, and so I was like, well, okay, I'll just sort of like copy that format and, um, and, and just build these absurd ones. So this one has got to start, are you garbage, yes or no? Uh, yes, you see me in your timeline. No, do you have a... Yes, you are drunken, sleeping, or drunken, cheating on me. Uh, and this is just sourcing questions and answers from, uh, from Twitter. Uh, so like declarative statements and then, uh, and then questions as well. Uh, there are some other ones uh, on here too. But um, here's one. This is definitely a stupidity one. I love finding uh, uh, rote jokes that people tell uh, and just writing up their algorithms and then spewing them to Twitter. This is actually weaponized humor. Um, I'm trying to kill a form of joke that I don't like. Um, and I've had mild success with it. Uh, this one just goes, you know, StubHub giveaway, more like ShrubHub giveaway, am I right? And it just looks at trending topics and it just parses them out into individual words and then it picks a rhyme and then it just tweets it. Five words to ruin a date, more like five words Chengdu ruin a date. Uh, uh, John Elway, more like denouement Elway. Um, uh, and the best part about these joke bots for me is seeing people um, use them somewhat innocently. They'll reply to someone making that style of joke and they'll go, oh, that's just like Am I Right Bot? And then my hope is that they look at the bot and then they go, oh, what am I doing with my life? Um, uh, that was very much the motivation behind two headlines, uh, which uh, does that sort of lazy form of joke where there are two things in, uh, 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 in the news, and the joke is just you confuse the two things. There are actually, when I was searching for names for this Twitter account, uh, hold on, type this out. .com slash. There, were like, there were like a zillion people who have like tried to start accounts where they do this manually, where they just, they just manually write these jokes that confuse different things in the news, and they never get that very far. My bot is far more industrious at creating this type of joke uh, than any human ever could uh, be. And, and, and Two Headlines is actually uh, funny a lot of the time. Uh, Mitt Romney used tricks to beat Baltimore Ravens, but don't be fooled. Uh, why does the mainstream media call General Motors the prophet? Uh, yeah. Second black box from Matthew McConaughey, Flight 8501. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, there are, uh, uh, so there, a lot of people really like this. They like to talk to it all the time. Um, uh, I get a ton of people who use this as a, one of those reference points again. Oh, that's just like two headlines. Um, and I have people who anecdotally have said they think that these bots have actually aided in somewhat killing these lazy jokes. Um, uh, so, so this is, uh, these bots are assassins of, of concepts uh, in addition to, to being somewhat funny. Uh, and, and, and two headlines is, again, a really, really simple algorithm. All it does is, uh, it's a scraper. It goes to Google News uh, and it, uh, it goes to the sidebar and it picks one category like US and it'll click on one of these topics by, uh, uh, at random like Mitt Romney and then it'll grab a headline. It makes no sense for Mitt Romney to run for president again. It knows Mitt Romney is the subject, so it swaps that out and uh, goes to technology and picks iPhone. It makes you know it makes no sense for iPhone to run for president again, right? Uh, and that's how it constructs these jokes. Um, and it's a lazy algorithm befitting a lazy joke. Uh, so uh, so again, this is this is really this is really simple stuff. I really don't like. Uh, putting a lot of effort into harder AI type things or, or computational stuff. I, every year I tell myself I'm going to learn computer vision and every year I find ways to hack my way around without having to learn computer vision software. Um, 
uh, this one's a more recent project. It's called the Yearly Awards. Uh, it, you just follow it, and it just gives you an award uh, for 2014. You know, uh, best uh, best Lotus of 2014, most sarcastic person of 2014, et cetera, et cetera. And you just follow it, and it, people love it because it's playful and uh, very limited engagement, and everyone loves getting awards, even if they're not deserved. Um, uh, and, and again, this is all that, but this is that context stuff again. You know, I'm launching this during award season because I was annoyed by how much award season chatter I saw on Twitter. Uh, it's like, uh, oh yeah, some website named you best uh, writer on this niche topic. Okay, that's cool. Uh, my bot just named me, uh, you know, best chief. So take that. Um, uh, content Forever uh, is another recent project of mine, and this one was me looking at Medium. Uh, and looking at long, like, really detailed, meaty pieces, uh, like, think pieces on Medium that really, like, just get deep into a subject and you learn almost nothing of value uh, about the world or, or our lives or anything. Um, and so this you can just say, oh, give me, give me five minutes of content on uh, 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 computing. Everything you need to know about computing. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a, that's a long one. Hold on. Uh, let's let's let, hold on. I got to try a different topic. Some of these are a little zippier than others. It doesn't demo super well. Uh, 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 grapes. Why 2014 was the year of grapes? Grape seed oil from crushed seeds is used in cosme cos cosmeceuticals and skincare products for perceived health benefits. Bacteria in a person's mouth convert glucose, fructose, and most commonly sucrose into acids, such as lactic acid, through glycosid process. Sucrose forms a major element in confectionery and desserts. Dessert is a typically sweet course that, includes, that concludes an evening meal. The village was founded by German immigrants. Okay, uh, uh, and, and what this actually does is it, it, it's actually the process of me automating myself falling down a Wikipedia hole. Um, so it just goes to Wikipedia for the subject you give it, looks at the first five paragraphs, picks a paragraph at random, prints it out, grabs a link from that, parag from that paragraph, goes to that article, grabs another one of the first five paragraphs. Uh, and the design process of this was actually the process of, because um, originally I was grabbing any paragraph at random, but actually constraining it to the first five paragraphs was important because the co on Wikipedia, the context of the first five paragraphs is usually uh, to set you up for a topic. So it sort of keeps it on that sort of general, not too deep level, so it feels more like a Medium article. Um, uh, I, I very I, I just copied their CSS completely, so uh, so there's uh, so this actually is laid out like a Medium article. Uh, it puts in uh, photo uh, pictures as well from these articles, uh, um, uh, and it gives you a way to share it with your friends uh, as well at the end. Uh, and uh, and this was again just me uh, like looking at things that people do in sort of a rote alg algorithmic way and 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 uh, 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 making it. Uh, uh, automated. Um, I'm going to plug very briefly uh, Bot Summit, uh, which is uh, an event that I run yearly now. Um, uh, the whole thing is online. We just get uh, sort of art bot makers together uh, once a year to talk about the art and craft of creating bots. Um, if you Google Bot Summit, you'll find it. You can watch the whole thing. It's only four hours long. Um, uh, Nanogenmo is another one that uh, uh, that actually has a lot of uh, um, uh, contextual stuff around it. This is if you've heard of NanoRimo, it's National Novel Writing Month. Uh, I propose National Novel Generation Month, where people spend the month of November writing code that generates a 50,000 word novel. Um, and so uh, and so it's just a it's like a, a competition that we it's like a friendly competition. There's no prize or anything, and and uh, and this is a bunch of people who work on uh, the context of a novel rather than the context of social networks as well. And it's just a totally different problem set uh, uh, that might be worth looking at as well. Um, uh, I was really happy to hear uh, Tom talk about rudeness in these things. Um, uh, so when you live on a social network, uh, you know, uh, when, when, this, when this thing you've written lives on a social network, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, there are people there, and they have feelings and agency and all that sort of stuff. 
Uh, and, uh, and so I, I try uh, very hard to both design things with the people who are interacting with them in mind, uh, but I also try very hard to sort of impress this upon the rest of the, the, the bot community, the bot making community as well. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, there, like two headlines is pretty popular, so a lot of people interact with it, and sometimes I'll get, you get kind of like the too soon response because it is pulling from news stories, right? So if there's a, if there's a massacre and a bunch of people are killed, uh, it's probably going to tell some jokes about that. Um, and, and I had to sit and think about whether that was something that I wanted it to do or not. And uh, um, uh, part of the way that I mitigate that is I make it very clear that this is a bot. Um, uh, I sort of refer to it as, the, as a from the mouths of bots type of reaction, like from the mouths of babes, but they're these like simple-minded bots. Um, by by uh, conceptualizing this as a non-human entity and being as straightforward and vocal as I can about how non-human it is, um, the fact that people can look at this and understand pretty quickly what the underlying algorithm that's happening is, like they can look at it and understand the formula. Uh, and the fact that they understand the formula means they, they're sort of literate about, like they, they have some level of procedural literacy about what's going on. Um, and they're much more forgiving for that reason. Uh, when these algorithms are more opaque, people tend to understand them less and then they tend to be able to like uh, ascribe motivations to them uh, or that sort of thing. Uh, and so one of the greatest tricks that I pull to, um, to make my bots less offensive in general is simply labeling them bot. Um, if I tried to pass my bots off as people, people, I, I know this because I've seen other people attempt to do this with their own work, people get very upset if they think that this entity is, is maliciously doing this. But if you sort of present it as this childlike algorithm that's so simple anyone can understand it, uh, then they just go, oh, that's an interesting consequence, consequence. and it seems much more like a, um, like a clockwork machine doing something weird than a malicious entity. Um, that's not to say that I don't put a lot of work into this. Uh, I have an extensive blacklist of terms that I just, my bots will never say. I run them all through that. I've open sourced it, so the rest of the community, a lot of them use it as well. Um, uh, I'm actually working on, my least favorite thing about two headlines is that it likes, it sometimes tweets jokes that are essentially just, the, the punchline is just uh, uh, inherently transphobic, uh, where it'll be like, Vin Diesel looks beautiful in her evening gown. Uh, and people find those jokes really funny, and I don't like how they find those jokes really funny, and I wouldn't tell those jokes myself, so I've actually been like working on like a, like a transphobic joke detector that I'm hoping to open source and release pretty soon. Um, uh, so there's a lot of, uh, of curation and stewardship that I do on these things too, but again, uh, there's a reason why I, I, I lean on these contextual tricks far more than I lean on, um, uh, on algorithmic cleverness uh, to, to do this sort of stuff. How am I on time? Okay, cool. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, so that's, I, I just wanted to point out some of the, um, uh, some of the contextual tricks that I use around this sort of thing. Um, I want to talk, I just wanted to point out that, that not all of this is technical. In fact, it's mostly not technical, um, which is why I'm excited about people who, I actually get much more excited by bots created by people who are not primarily programmers. Um, I think you get much more interesting results from, uh, from folks who have a better understanding of the world uh, than necessarily APIs and programming languages and that sort of thing. Uh, um, so uh, if anybody here would like to work on a bot, please let me know. Um, uh, I can point you to a bunch of resources or help you out. And uh, in our breakout session, we're gonna talk about more about these design considerations. I'd love to hear your experiences with bots or you know, any questions you might have around bot designs that you might be working on. So thank you. Great, thank you.